All right, so we are going to work on the first part of Unit 3 review. First question says, which of the following is the most important feature of a compound that determines its smell and taste? So, sure, functional groups definitely play a role, but the best answer here is total structure because you would really have to look at how many functional groups there are and take the entire structure into account before trying to predict properties. So, a little bit tricky if you circled functional group there. Um, I wasn't really trying to trick you, but um, just kind of think about that a little bit deeper. All right, number two. You're supposed to draw these and name the functional group that's there. So, so let's check out the first one. C5, so I'm gonna do five carbons. There's one nitrogen, I'm just gonna put that on the end here. And then all of these will be hydrogens. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Double check, make sure you haven't violated any rules. And we've got carbon bonded to a nitrogen, so that is an amine. All right, next one, we've got C2O2. So we can do a C double bonded to an O, and then we can have an H, and then an OH, and that is definitely a carboxylic acid. Next one, methylformate. We can do C double bonded to an O, O, C. Fill in our other H's here. We've got four to work with. One, two, three, four. And that is an ester. Ester is a kook. Circle that right here. Should have circled this one. All right. Hexanone. I'm going to do C, C, C. I'm going to do a carbon double bond into a carbon in the middle. Six carbons. Add all my hydrogens in. I've got 12 to work with. That's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, that is a ketone right here in the middle. C double bonded to an O surrounded by two C's. Now this one they didn't have us draw, which was an alcohol. That would be anything that had a C, O, H, just for the record. All right, now we're supposed to draw two versions of each of these. Okay, so let's see. First I'm just gonna do C, 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 and O, it's a good idea to do everything but the H's. Then I'm gonna go back and see how my H's work out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nitrogen needs one more, eight, nine. That's perfect, so I don't need any double bonds. And I'm gonna add in my lone pairs too, just to be proper. All right, another version, how about I do C, N, C, O, C really mix it up here and put my H's one two three four five six seven eight nine there we go I've got two different versions of the same formula C4 H10 I like it when they get easier I've got C4 put on my ten hydrogens here Okay. This is the one where people kind of get confused because they'll try and just draw the chain a little differently when actually you need to break a bond and put it somewhere new. So I'm going to put one of my carbons on that central carbon for my second isomer. And draw in my 10 hydrogens. We are good. Number four, draw the Lewis dot symbols for the honk elements. Hydrogen has one, oxygen has six valence electrons. I'm getting these from the group number, like oxygens in group 6A. So I go around in clockwise direction until I've done six. There are two lonely electrons. Carbon, four. So one, two, three, four valence electrons. Nitrogen's in group 5A. So one, two, three, four, five valence electrons. How do these symbols result or relate to the honk one, two, three, four? Hydrogen has one lonely electron, 
so it can make one bond. So the number of lonely electrons equals how many how many bonds will form. All right, moving on to the back side, it says for these, draw the Lewis dot symbol and then identify how many bonds they can form. All right, bromine is in group 7A, so it ends up having seven dots and just one lonely electron. Selenium has six valence electrons, so it has two lonely ones. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. Oops, one, two, three, four, five, so it can form three bonds. Hydrogen just has the one. Arsenic is in group 5A, so one, two, three, four, five, three covalent bonds. And argon is interesting. It's got eight valence electrons, so it actually forms zero bonds because it's got the grade eight already. Number six, draw a picture of how the bonds form in PBr3. Draw arrows to show where electrons are bonding, show the Lewis structure. Okay, I'm not gonna draw the arrows, I'm just gonna draw the molecule. So three lonely electrons. So I'm gonna face my bromine lonely electrons in that direction. Bromine's in group 7A, so each of these gets seven. Phosphorus, of course, was in group 5A, so it got five electrons. Once I've got those, I can connect my lonely electrons. And now I've got PBr3. Completing this table is more practice with drawing. So H, H, C, H, 5N. I'm going to draw my C and my N first. I'm going to connect those together and I'm going to put my five lonely electrons with the hydrogens. CH3, NH2. This is actually the same exact molecule. It's just written in a little bit of a different order. ASH3, AS has five valence electrons, so each of these will bond to the hydrogen. CH4S, so we've got C, S, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's connect these once, and I can see right away where my four H's are supposed to go, right on these lonely electrons here. C2H2, let's draw this out. C2, let's connect them once. H4, so I'm gonna put an H here, I'm gonna put an H here, I'm gonna put an H here, and I'm gonna put an H here. I still have two lonely ones, so I need to connect that and make it a double bond. CH2O2, so I'm gonna make my C here, I'm gonna make one of my O's here. I'm gonna make another O up here. I'll tell you why, because carbon is the central atom. So I'm gonna actually make a double bond here and a single bond here, because then I can see I can put my two hydrogens here and here. N2, N's got five valence electrons, so Two with five, let's bond these then. One, two, three. That's a really messy triple bond, so I'm gonna redraw it. One, two, three. There is a beautiful drawing of N2. Last, we've got C, O, C, L, two. Draw an O up here. Try and put carbon in the middle. I'm gonna draw a CL over here and a CL over here. Remember, things like to be symmetrical. Okay, so I'm gonna connect everything at least once, and then I see there's another one I can connect here to make that a double bond. This was two next to each other, it kinda looks like one. There we go. All right, last question. Draw at least four isomers of C6H14. I'm not gonna draw in all the H's, but here's one where you just have them all in a row. 
Here's another one where we've got five in a row and one off that second carbon. Here's another one where you've got four in a row and two off of there. And then let's do five in a row again and one off of the middle carbon this time. So those are some options. There is another one as well, but I'll leave that up to you if you want to find it. So hopefully that helped get you through your Unit 3 structure drawing review.